Hello everyone, this is the video on colligative properties from Unit 4. Here we are going to be there we go. Focusing specifically on mixtures that are still homogeneous but not quite solutions. <clears throat> so we're going to just be dealing with colloids. It's really just the concept itself. So we talked about solutions. Solutions are homogeneous mixtures that have tiny particles. Um, those, for some reason, this is not showing my title. Um, that's okay. Colloids, on the other hand, are a suspension. It's not really like the same type of mixture. These are suspended rather than totally dissolved and mixed. They still do not settle. We say that, but really they, they will eventually. A solution will never, ever, ever settle. A colloid will settle eventually, um, but they won't settle anytime soon. These are created by an emulsion of two things that really aren't supposed to be mixable. Uh, they are supposed to be, you know, with different characteristics, essentially. Now, because they are not really truly miscible, they have, there's a scattering of, of light there. There's a Tyndall effect where you can't see through these. These are not going to be clear. They're going to be cloudy solutions. You can make them by two ways. You can either have a dispersion where you take something large and try and grind it up until the particles are small enough that they will actually go into solution for a while. That's how they make paint actually. They take these pigments and they um, grind it and grind it and grind it and at some point it becomes molecules that you can force into the solution. The other is condensation where you have small particles gr uh, gradually grow larger until you end up getting a cl cloudy appearance, something like clouds. It's how clouds form. Come on, there we go. Now you have hydrophilic colloids. These are things that are both uh, going to have either a polar or a hydro hydrogen bonding site. These are water loving things. You're going to have a lot of uh, hydrophilic interactions there. Now these can be reversible or irreversible. Now what I mean by that is they can be forced into that into a colloid and never change. Um, something like milk, you know, or it could be something like agar where you have, um, if you've ever done biology, this is the plate substance that you make, you grow bacteria and things on. But this is a gel and you can cool it off and make it a solid type of colloid or you can heat it up and it'll turn back into a liquid and you can reform it. Now hydrophobic colloids are usually going to be unstable because of the hydrophobic interactions and so you have to really like continually agitate them to keep it in solution. So we spent a lot of this unit talking about solutions. Now we're talking about colloids. Now the difference between a solution and a colloid is just that the particles are just a tiny bit bigger. If you look at a suspension, a suspension has huge particles. These settle out within a couple of minutes. You know, you mix sand and water, the sand starts to settle out pretty quick. Colloid, you're talking about days or a couple of weeks before they'll settle. Uh, what I mean by that is if you've ever left a cup of milk out or found a bottle that was a few days old, you can usually start to see the settling at some point. It's just not immediate. Just like with solutions, you can have any phase in any phase for a colloid. Solid in a gas is something like smoke or dust. You have those solid particles floating around in the gas phase. You have a solid in liquid, something like paint or ink. Solid in solid. <laughs> These are usually alloys or gems. Uh, usually what gives like sapphires and emeralds color is the particles that are dissolved in those those solids. Liquid in a gas, things like clouds, fogs, you have the liquid particles that are up in the gas phase. They're not in a container. 
Liquid in liquid is something like mayonnaise or milk. Liquid in a solid, something like a jello. Yeah. Gas in a liquid, foam, whipped cream. Whipped cream is awesome. Meringue. Uh, gas in solid would be something like pumice stones. Um, these are, you know, the difference here is like that's the, of the examples that we use, it's not the best because it'll never settle out really because it's permanent. So colloids are also going to be kind of unstable because of those medium sized particles. They don't really want to stay in solution. They're going to become separated by one of three ways. They can start to flake. This is usually done by adding something. You can uh, expose it to a charge or whatever, but you can kind of see like it starts to flake. So this is called flocculation. Um, it is just a way that the particles will eventually settle. Creaming is when one of the substances moves to the top or bottom. That is what happens when you leave milk and other things out. Um, you'll see like the nice yellow clear stuff on top and the chunky stuff on the bottom. Uh, coalescence is when you have small droplets bump into each other and get progressively larger. I had a really hard time finding an image of that that was Creative Commons licensed. but. Now the big thing here guys is when you have solutions and colloids one of the best things to do is you can really get interactions between things that don't want to do it. So if you have soap, soap has got this really long hydrocarbon chain. These are the two most active ingredients in your um, in your soaps, your detergents if you go look. Sodium lauryl sulfate is in most detergents. Sodium uh, stearate is in most soap. It kind of stinks as my sister is allergic to that, so. Haha. <laughs> uh, it takes forever to find detergent for her. Um, but anyway, long hydrocarbon chain, polar head where you've got an ionic charge that will interact with water. And so what will happen is you use soap or detergent. The hydrocarbon hydrophobic ends will interact with one another and the dirt will aggregate in the center while the hydrophilic and polar heads will interact with water and it just kind of washes away as a bubble. Okay. So applications of so solutions and colloids are pretty widespread actually. So you can destroy a colloid. We've said that they're unstable. They they will separate by flocculation, creaming, or or um, why can I coalescence? Um, the you can force the issue by either heating them, applying a voltage, adding a salt. Uh, you can speed up the process that way. So, so far this unit we talked about solutions are homogeneous mixtures that form between solute and solvent substances when the interactions between the two favor their mixing. Concentrations of solutes can be calculated using a lot of different units and they're all important so you need to make sure you can do that. Solubility of solutes is going to be affected by temperature, pressure, agitation, and structural effects. So that's where intermolecular forces and other things come into play. The number of particles dissolved uh, is what affects colligative properties the most. It's not the identity. You need to be able to do calculations with vapor pressure, freezing point elevation, I mean freezing point depression, boiling point elevation, osmotic pressure, those things. And then colloids are homogeneous mixtures that scatter light. They are still homogeneous, but they're also unstable due to solute size. So that is it for unit four.